Of those that were profitable, what, what is their average tax rate? Mr. Ponton, I believe you have a filter turned on in the video settings. Uh, you might want to uh, uh, take, take we're a trying look. To, we're tr can you I looked it up, and the average tax rate for the Fortune 500 companies that paid taxes was 11.3%. Uh, you might want to. Uh, uh, take, take we're a trying look. to. We're tr can you hear me, Judge? That surprised me. Does that surprise you? I can hear you. I think it's a filter. It, in the it is, and I don't know how to remove it. I've got my assistant here. She's trying to, but. Uh, Those five companies are Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, Amazon, and Verizon. Does that surprise you? I'm prepared to go forward with it. That's, I'm here live, it's not, I'm not a cat. Self-destruct sequence activated. Three, two, one. Is this your homework, Larry? Ask him about the car, man. Is this yours, Larry? Is this your homework, Larry? Is that your car out front? Is this your homework, Larry? We, we know it's his homework. Where's the fucking money, you little brat? Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Johnny here. I hope you're all having a great week so far. Let's get right into today's episode. So in one of its worst months to date, Bitcoin closed the month of May down almost 37% from its $57.79,000 open and down nearly 42% from the $64.89,000 all-time high we saw just back in April. Now the price is currently sitting just under $37,000, holding support above the 55 weekly exponential moving average. Adding some strength to the support level is the 23.6 Fibonacci retracement level, as well as an anchored view app from the point of breakout of this parabolic rally that began in October of last year. If the bulls are unable to bring the price back up above the 34 and 21 weekly exponential moving averages, then we could be looking at some further downside in the coming days to weeks with price targets all the way down near 28.3. 26 and 23.1 thousand dollars. Now, price action right now is in this symmetrical triangle with a bit of a bearish bias, but it is holding support above the 55 weekly exponential moving average, again with strong support below the price, but a break below this symmetrical triangle's trend line could see price head down towards the targets I mentioned earlier with a measured move of the bearish breakout right at 22 point six six thousand dollars a 37 percent move from where current price action is if we take a look at the daily indicators a lot of them are indeed oversold except for the stochastic which is in bullish control territory now we did see a bullish cross here on the macd just a couple of days ago and the volume weighted macd as well while it does appear that the bears are in control there are some on-chain indicators that suggest that the selling pressure is subsiding hinting towards the possibility that we may just be at the bottom of this correction. One of the most interesting themes holding a Bitcoin's bullish bias intact is witnessing long-term holders and accumulation addresses stacking more Bitcoin since the correction began early last month. A glass node indicator that we've discussed a few times before on this channel, the Bitcoin Entity Adjusted Spend Output Profit Ratio, or SOPR for short, is showing us that the market is no longer selling Bitcoin at a loss on aggregate. And further on-chain data shows that exchanges saw a decline in their reserves, a signal that less traders are looking to sell. Thanks to Yashu Gola for this great article in Cointelegraph, where they discussed three important indicators coming from Glassnode that describes three kinds of reaction in the Bitcoin spot market that we observed since this correction began. The first involved panic selling by short-term traders who sold Bitcoin to minimize their losses, probably because they bought near the top. 
The second reaction involved long-term holders who decided to hold on to their existing supply. They showed a long-term conviction in Bitcoin's bullish bias against supportive macroeconomic fundamentals, such as low interest rates, poor yields on government bonds, inflation fears, and a declining dollar that made hedging assets like Bitcoin look attractive to hold on to. Now, we've discussed this idea in great detail in a few of the previous episodes, the most recent of which is popping up on your screen right now. Now, if we take a look here at the DXY, it is in the green today, looking for an oversold bounce and a breakout of this falling wedge pattern, but we may not see that happen. The 10-year rate is starting to rise again, which does correlate to a bearish dollar, and we're also seeing the price of gold rise, a strong clue about the future outlook for the dollar. Now, gold is actually looking incredibly bullish right now on the verge of breaking out of this huge cup and handle with a measured move target all the way up at $2,890, a more than 60% move from where the price is right now. Now, should the trend of investors moving into Bitcoin more so than gold, then it's a lot more likely than we are approaching the bottom of this massive correction direction if this gold chart is an indicator of what's to come. Now, this article goes on to explain the third reaction, which was a mix of hodlers and accumulators, with traders utilizing the Bitcoin price dip to buy up more of the crypto at a discount. Various on-chain indicators do show huge contrast between the Bitcoin reserves held by short-term buyers and long-term holders during the price crash. For example, the Bitcoin spent output age bands, this chart saw a greater amount of selling last week coming from coins that were between one day and one week old. These coins kept moving in and out of the market, accurately reflecting the state of higher price volatility in the market last week. Meanwhile, coins that remain unspent from one to three months and three to six months also changed addresses in the wake of the recent price crash. Another glass node metric dubbed the Bitcoin total supply held by long-term holders shows that long-term holders, entities that hold Bitcoin for more than six months, became the largest beneficiaries of the tokens sold by the short-term holders. We're also seeing the total number of accumulation addresses and the balance within these wallets rise. An accumulation address is an address that has received at least two Bitcoin transactions, but has never moved Bitcoin out of their wallet. Now, in the last seven days, the number of these accumulation addresses have climbed, adding about 7,430 new wallets to the list. Another metric dubbed the Bitcoin supply held by entities with balances 0.01 to 0.1 shows that new users entered the Bitcoin network during this price dip. Additionally, the supply held by these addresses has grown between 0.001 and 1 Bitcoin in them, increased in tandem, showing steady growth in retail interest. Now, while we may indeed be at the bottom of this correction, we really need to see the bull step in and push the price back above these crucial resistance levels right here at the 34 and 21 weekly EMA with the 34 at $38.9 thousand dollars and the 21 weekly EMA at $44.5 thousand dollars. Should the bull step in and we get a bullish breakout out of this symmetrical triangle, which honestly is pretty likely, mostly because Bitcoin is due for a bounce uh, we did get the bullish macd crosses on both the volume weighted macd and the regular macd on the daily and we did get a bullish confirmation on the volume weighted macd which honestly is pretty promising a bullish breakout out of this symmetrical triangle could see a 56 percent move all the way back up to 56.4 thousand dollars and back above the 21 exponential weekly moving average now that's exactly what i'm looking for to become mega bullish on this price again but i'm just not yet convinced that we'll see that on this bounce now a relief rally is highly likely though which would ultimately be a bearish retest unless the bulls can step in and print a new all-time high now either way bitcoin is quickly approaching the decision point of this triangle about 70 percent through so we can expect some pretty extreme volatility here very very soon if the bulls are not able to step in and push the price above these levels, then we will be looking for fills down here at $28.3 thousand dollars, $26 thousand dollars, and potentially $23.1 thousand dollars. We'll likely see more sideways consolidation and accumulation over the next few weeks to months, 
which will likely translate into some incredible performance out of all coins, giving us an awesome opportunity to add to our Bitcoin bag. And while I am bearish in the short term, I remain incredibly bullish on the price of Bitcoin for later in 2021, especially if this monthly chart continues to nail these bull cycle tops with the next target all the way up at 365.7 thousand dollars. But that's it. Today was a short one. That's all I have for you guys today. If you're interested in trading Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other altcoins, you can do so with us over on Bybit. And right now, you can get over $300 in bonuses. Now, if you're new here or you're interested in learning more about technical analysis, head on over to the website, threecandlecollective.com, and submit your info to take our TA Basic Training course for free. From now until the end of the month, it's going to be free for a limited number of seats. But that's it. Thank you, guys. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.